Welcome, subscribers. We are talking to Susan Joy Renison, author of *Tuning the Diamonds*, and we are continuing our discussion now in the subscriber section here. And I would love to begin uh, on a on a more recent note, talking about a, the latest news about all the disappearing bees. Uh, I would like to just ask Susan about this because this is, of course, a very uh, worrisome uh, development, and, and uh, the consequence of this basically is can be catastrophic uh, or catastrophic to say the least. And I just wanted to hear from Susan if if she's got any you know views on this particular thing that's starting to happen now, and if this actually might be connected in some way with more energy uh, coming in or, or or what have you. But uh, Susan, what, what's your, your what's your take on it? Because I know that you follow this too on your blog. Well, I actually found an interesting article today, and basically they were saying that um, the, the um, people who do organic beekeeping are not reporting any losses of bees, and so they're starting to think that maybe it's um, where they have a certain type of what factory sort of beekeeping in a way you could, you could call it that, yeah. where you actually have um, hyperbred varieties of bees, um, and they're not coping with the environment. Um, they're talking about stress. I know there's been talk about mobile phones yeah. and uh, fungus and there's, um, pathogens and mites and stuff like that. But we're seeing this being reported around the world. I see this as part of the environmental changes. I actually see that the, um, the bees are not coping with the environment. And, and I see this as the electromagnetic environment of the Earth. Um, what I actually believe is that as we are getting blasted with energy, um, this energy is multidimensional. And um, I see this in terms of changing um, the fields, uh, the controlling fields that the, bird, uh, sorry, that the bees and also the birds and all the different species, all life, um, all these different um, controlling fields are being changed. Mm. Um, and I t um, talk about Rupert Sheldrake, yeah. his theory of morphogenesis. And I see that um, the way I, I talk about it is that we, there seems to be a link between um, energy coming from outside our system and mass extinctions. Hmm. And so our evolutionary biologists are now saying that the the number of species going ex going extinct, this is the highest rate in 65 million years. Hmm. And I feel that the bees are also being affected by the changes. Oh um, I'm, I'm heartened to hear that um, the organic beekeeping, um, those bees are, seem to be okay. I'm heartened to hear this. Yeah. But I do feel it is related to the massive changes on our planet and the way that we do business on this planet as well. You know, yeah, the way yeah. we, we do things, that has to change. Indeed. You know, we have to have, do things in a more natural way. Um, somehow the bees are, don't seem to be coping with the changes. Hmm. And uh, we are seeing this, um, people saying that it's pollution, it's what we're doing. And I do think humans are partly to blame, but I do see this as a natural process of change. Hmm. I feel that the controlling morphogenetic fields are changing, the environment is changing, um, and that's the way I explain it um, in the book is I say that DNA um, isn't, doesn't just randomly change. DNA will actually um, change according to the environment. Um, DNA will actually pick up an outside signal and then use that information to actually change itself, to adapt to the environment. So it's getting programming, in a way, from somewhere? I believe that, yes. I do believe that. I, I, I see the energy that's coming to this planet as multidimensional mm. energy. And it's like... Um, the controlling fields, that's the, way, that's the only way I can explain it, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Um, the fields that we use to operate, um, the animals operate, they, they must have some kind of controlling mechanism. Scientists can't explain why um, fish, you know, swarm and why birds behave the way, the way that they fly. They, they don't understand the way that they operate. Sure, yeah. Something, they must be tapping into fields of, of information. Hmm. So they know what they have to do. Yeah, yeah. And those fields of information, I believe, are being changed. 
Now, if the um, species, the plant life, the animal life, the bees, the birds, if they don't respond quickly enough, then they die out. Hmm. Now, <laughs> on hmm. my blog, I have some really interesting examples of hmm. Um, what I consider to be these morphogenetic fields. I mean, there is a story of a, of a, a rock that's been found. I think it was China, mm -hmm. where there was hair growing out of the rock. Oh my! Have you heard of this story? <laughs> no, never. <laughs> Tell us about it. <laughs> go to the go down to the blog. It's really interesting, and it, they've actually put this thing on display. They found it on a beach hmm. where the hair, where the, the rock was growing hair. Oh right? Yeah. Sheesh. Now, the way I see it is that apparently there's only ever been two or three of these things found. <laughs> I see it as that how does a rock know how to be a rock? Yeah. Okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something tells it what to do to be a rock. Yeah. And I see that the somehow the rock can tap into fields of knowledge. <laughs> but sometimes the, the messages can get screwed. And so <laughs> you get like a... This is like a... Wrong information coming through. Yeah, this, this is an entire toupee on this rock, basically. I'm looking at the picture now. <laughs> 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 That's nice. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah, it is. And yeah. I talk about, I make a joke of it and say that it's like a glitch in the matrix. Indeed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I make there a big go. joke of it. Yeah. But to me, that's a really good example <laughs> of these... Um, it, it's an uh, abnormality. Think, it's it's, yeah, it's yeah. something where it's not quite right. So there's a there there is a, a bug in the in the code, as it were, or the the yes. programming code. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other example we're getting, I I do I've started to document um, the, the mutations. We're getting very very strange mutations now because of the cosmic rays coming in. Hmm. And we're starting to get really weird stuff now. You know, <laughs> lambs born with six legs. You Oof. know. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of animals with two faces, two-faced kitten, two-faced calves, two mm. you know, lots of different examples now. Yeah. Huh. Um, but there's one where there was a, a chicken born with duck's feet. Oh, my. With webbed feet. And I see that as a sort of a, where the information's got mixed up. Mm. Yeah. Because you can do this in the laboratory. Mm. The Russians have been doing it where they take the genome information and it's electromagnetic, everything is signals. Sure. And then they just... Um, Slightly they change it a little. The, the, the wrong, info, you know, the different information to yeah. the DNA and it changes. Yeah, yeah. And so they can do this in the laboratory with electromagnetism. Mm. <laughs> so I see this quite clearly that because of the chaos, it is chaotic in, the, in terms of the change, you're going to get these strange abnormalities hmm. happening. Oh, that's a wonderful news story. I got to put up that one later with the, uh, with with the, the rock. With the rock and the hair there, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. You know. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's absolutely incredible. <laughs> but, it, it, but you know, if you understand this uh, this sort of concept of the matrix and the fact you have fields of information mm. and that the somehow the DNA can connect to this uh, controlling field. Mm. It all seems to make sense, and I feel that we have enough science to validate this. Mm, yeah, you you go into that, I guess, a lot in your, um, you know, in your work regarding DNA, and also the very interesting, as you as you said, your reference the the Russian DNA uh, uh, research, basically that was taking place, I, I guess, a few a few years ago. I remember an article that I put up. Uh, that also, of course, talked about this, which basically, you know, verifies, um, in a way, paranormal phenomena, and even, you know, you can have basically have, uh, you know, organic material changing its 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 shape because it all depends on, as you say, that the code or the instruction, or in this case, mm. the the light yeah. or the frequency that it, that it actually receives. So. Mm. What we might be seeing here, then, as you as as you say, is is that if you have this change in in uh, the light that emanates or the frequency that emanates from our uh, galactic core, this directly would affect ourselves, our human bodies, and the consequence of this is the upgrade that you talk about, right? Yes. Well, the th the thing is, is that um, I'm an EMS balancing technique practitioner. And basically, I, was, I learned how to work with people's energy fields. Mm. And what's happening now is that um, people are actually seeing that the energy field around humans is actually changing. Mm. 
And so um, methods have been developed to actually help to enhance the changes, to speed up this evolutionary process hmm. and to help people. And for me, this is very important to actually explain this where this comes from, the credibility of the people that are teaching these things, and where we have scientists that can validate what they're saying. So I talk about Dr. Valerie Hunt and her research, 45 years of um, working with the human energy field. And I, what, what amazed me is that um, Dr. Valerie Hunt um, is a very um, respectable scientist, um, and yet she was saying things that validated the um, what mystics were teaching. Yeah. And I found this absolutely incredible. Now, Dr. Valerie Hunt says that all alternative medicine is trying to change the electromagnetic field. This electromagnetic field is like a controlling field. It's a multidimensional controlling field. Mm. From the moment of conception, there was an electromagnetic field that develops around the fetus. Hmm. Okay, mm, yeah. um, and this is the field that sort of has everything about you, uh, but we can actually work with that field. Mm. And so I, I find this actually quite amazing. But yeah. um, Dr. Valerie Hunt says that um, if you've had cancer and the doctors tell you you're in remission, mm. she says she can look at your energy field. You know, she basically detects it. Mm. Okay, with very sophisticated instruments. And, and she says that she can tell you whether you still have a cancerous field. Hmm. And she says, unless that field changes, the cancer will come back. She says, I don't care hmm. whether the biochemical level tells you that mm -hmm. you're clear. She says, if the field, if the electromagnetic field says cancer, you still got cancer. Hmm. So this is incredible hmm. um, that um, this kind of understanding, to me, it's very clear, yeah. very, very clear just because you can't see this electromagnetic field around the human doesn't mean to say it's not there. No, 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 of course not. And um, you can explain it in terms of multidimensional realities. Mm. Some people actually have the ability to see these fields. Yeah. Now, I think in the last week or so, there's been uh, an article about a woman who has suffered from um, hypoelectrosensitivity. Mm -hmm. I've got that mm -hmm. right, have an electro hypersensitivity, that's it. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things uh, about these people is that some of them can actually see the electric and magnetic fields. Hmm. They don't talk about it because obviously um, some people might be worried they might get locked up hmm. for yeah. saying that they can Sheesh. see these fields. Yeah. Hmm. So um, just because the majority of people can't see them doesn't mean to say that they're not there. Yeah, and yeah. I know from my personal experience um, that I've seen energy fields. Um, I've seen energy coming off of my hands. Um, as, I think as part of the consequence of the Kundalini, I actually um, attract a lot of energy, let's say. I channel lots of energy. Mm. And I've seen energy coming off my hands. And I've actually seen um, the actual golden energy that's now predominant on the planet. Yeah. I see the... <clears throat> I see the energy coming to the planet as multidimensional, um, I, but I see that not all the energy um, that hu humans can use. I don't think all of it we can use, but some of this energy that's coming is 